Okay, so we are live now. So before, since we have one minute before we're actually supposed to be live, I'm just going to mention to everyone who's watching that we're going to run another challenge starting on Monday the 21st of November. It's the Most of Your Carb Cravings Challenge where we are going to do seven days of just learning different tools and learning how to access your mind and change the way that you're thinking to just build that foundation that you can stand on when you want to quit carbs. So if you want to join that one, you can sign up on pimjohnson.com forward slash challenge. And I don't think I've put it in the description, but I might have. I'll have to double check that when we're, <laughs> when we're done. And now it's time for some live coaching and I have a new victim with me and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Um, but uh, we're going to start from scratch. We have a few addictive behaviors to deal with. So it's going to be a lot of changing your mindset around things, obviously dealing with the cravings and how to do that and all the emotional crap that is going on. So it's going to be a journey and it's going to be quite interesting. We'll see how far we get today. Hello, Miss Paprika. So, Jared, over to you. Tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. What why you are doing this, what it is that you want to achieve, etc. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> She's you like, start. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my name is Jared. I'm 33. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> and who Why are you? Perfect. What's your biggest problem? Um, so I have just a pretty gnarly addictive nature. Um, Currently, I'm about a year and a half um, sober off of alcohol and weed, and I also quit smoking about a year and a half ago. So um, I'm happy about that. But oh, but I haven't. I don't feel like it's really addressed the um, the cause. I just it's just a couple things that I've cut out, but I still feel like that um, that monster is still very much there. Um, currently, I would definitely say that I'm addicted to food. Um, masturbation slash pornography, um, just oversleeping, just sleeping to escape life. Um, and yeah, so I really just kind of want to get to the bottom of that. I want to have, um, emotional freedom. I want to have the freedom just to make my own choices. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of potential and a lot of, um, great, things going on in my head, but with these things that I've been dealing with for the majority of my life, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to truly access my potential. I feel like this has really been a big stumbling block for me for going on a long time and um, went through the challenge, the week-long challenge that you were just talking about, and I thought that going a little bit deeper would be better. So now I'm on YouTube. So yeah, here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's very brave. Not everyone would want to do that, shall we say. So it's cool. I wasn't going to do this again, but here we are because she was asking about it. And I thought, well, okay, let's just do it. So the first thing that I want to address today is just to make sure that you know what to do. Because the first thing we need to do is just get you practicing pretty much what we were talking about in the challenge and that is just practicing a new habit loop. Are you familiar with a habit loop? Do you remember what that is? Or do I need to run through that? I think I have a, a general understanding, but um, I might need a refresher. <laughs> I don't know, she says. <laughs> so cute. I'm not distracted by dogs at all. <laughs> so... Yeah, a habit loop is literally a series of events that just happens after each other. And it's something that we have practiced. So it's something that our brain just puts on autopilot. So it always starts with a trigger of some kind. So that might be any anyone saying something. Maybe you see food or you smell something. You, it could be a memory. It could be you walking into the supermarket, which automatically is a trigger for you because then you start thinking about you know, nachos or chocolate or whatever it might be. So triggers can be pretty much anything that makes you think about wanting something that you have decided that you're not going to have. So it starts with a trigger and that a trigger will create a thought 
in your head and thoughts should be quite simple <laughs> to understand what a thought is but for right. <laughs> some people are more visual so it might not be a formed sentence and it might just be like a picture in your head that could be a thought but it can also just be sentences that you're having in your brain and those are all thoughts and thoughts are just something that you create and most often we're having thoughts that we have thought many many times so that we don't have to create new ones so when we want to change our thoughts that is going to be something that feels hard to do because we have to start from scratch and we have to do it consciously whatever thoughts you're having about the food will then create a craving <laughs> she's very vocal it will create a craving and that, that craving as I see a craving is it compulses you to go and eat that. So it's like an urge, an urge and a craving. I talk about them in the same sense. And it's a feeling in your body. So when you have a craving, it's literally something physiological happening in your body. So for me, it's always like I, I start salivating and I get a bit of tension here, like in my jaw. And then I can feel it the whole way down where the food would go. And it's just like tension and it vibrates a little bit. <sighs> And that's what oh, I'm going to have you explore all three of those this week okay. and your response to them. <laughs> oh, and your response to those cravings and whatever. I mean, you have told me already that you want to stop. You want to stop right now. You have a lot of things that you want to do over these six months. But if you go off track here, from my perspective, that is not a problem. All I want you to do is start observing, like, what are your triggers? What are you thinking when you're getting triggered? And how does that manifest in your body? Like, what is the feeling that you get in your body when that is happening? So there are three things which you can pick up on when you have cravings. And you can pick up on either the trigger, the thought, or the craving, how that feels in your body. And you will just know that this is part of the habit loop. So now I'm going to want to eat that thing. Sometimes you might pick up the trigger straight away. Other times you might not notice it until you actually feel the physical sensation in your body, which is what I do a lot of the time because the others are not really a problem. But then I just notice like I'm salivating and I don't really know why. But I know that there has been a craving there. <laughs> I think she wants to go down. She's like, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let her down really quick because she's starting to drive me nuts. All right. One second. All right. Go on. Have some fun. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yes, Patricia, we have more snoozies. <laughs> Perfect. Can't, Can't have too many schnauzers. Yeah, I love my little baby. I forgot that you have one too. What's 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 yours called? Amy. Amy. I knew you had a fluffy, but I didn't know if that was the schnauzer or not. No, she's not a schnauzer. She's a Chinese crested. Okay. And she's about as restless as your schnauzer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So you, we can do this with everything. Like you can do this when you have an urge to watch some porn or when you just want to go back to sleep. Like explore what it is that is going on. Just try mm -hmm. to catch those thoughts and how it feels in your body. So it doesn't have to be the food. I'm just going to talk about this, uh, these things in a food sense. But if you want to do it with other things, fine. We can work on all of them together if that's what you want to do because it's the same thing that you need to do. Mm. And whatever you're doing, it's still, it's still a skill that you're using to just catch those urges and prevent yourself from going through with them. And we want to do this in a relaxed way. So we don't want to use willpower. Are you opposed to keeping a diary of the no, cravings? Not no? at all. Excellent. Then I want you to do that. So whenever you have a craving, when it's convenient, when you're working, it might not be convenient, but whenever it's convenient, just note everything down. So note down what the trigger was, what your thoughts were, and how that feels in your body. If you don't pick it up until you actually have the physical sensation in your body, you can still think back, okay, but what was I thinking? And what could the circumstance be that is actually triggering to me? So we can work backwards as well and just try to remember or figure out what it is that is going on. Sure. Do you have any idea what your cravings feels like in your body? No. 
no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we can't yep. practice right now. And I usually yep. don't get that far. It's usually just the, there's the desire and I run to it. Yeah. Okay. I know, yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one. Let's just put it like that. It was like, <laughs> nope. I just do it. So so that's where you need to slow down a bit. Like, just notice. Oh, I, I do want to go and get this. Ah, hang on. Now I'm just going to feel what's happening. And for you, it might be useful if you're just closing your eyes to get rid of all the other input. I know that's very useful for me because I'm not, I'm not an expert at feeling what's going on in my body. But it's a lot easier when I just kind of close everything out. But the important thing is that you just write it down in as much detail as possible and try to put your scientist hat on. Imagine that I'm from a different planet or I, I have no idea what, you know, what cravings feel like. I don't even know what they are. I don't understand why you will go and eat because you feel something. And you're like, well, you know, this tension in my jaw and I start to salivate and this and that and that. So try to be as... Um, just observe what's happening and be factual with what's going on in your body. And when you write it down, it has two purposes. <laughs> the first one is that when you do that, you're kind of taking a step back and you emotionally disconnect a little bit from it because now you're just interested in what's going on physiologically rather than emotionally. So it's easier to not give in to that craving when you do that. And secondly, the when you write everything down, it's easy for you to have a look at it and like, oh yeah, I know when this is happening. And you can probably think about a lot of other times that has happened as well. You okay with that? Yeah, and I think, I think uh, writing it down also gives me more of a chance to just actually, as you're saying, just feel what's going on. And yeah, yeah that's exciting to just, and, and, and having that, that interruption in the the thought loop or the habit loop, as you were saying, will really yeah. help, you know, address the issue. So sounds good to me. Yeah. The last part, which we're not too bothered about right now, but you can start practicing that if, if it feels okay. It's just, you just sit with that feeling. Even after you have explored it, what it is like in your body, you just sit with it for a while, allow yourself to feel it and be okay with feeling it. Like, don't try to push it away, don't wish that it will go away, or hope that it should go away very quickly because you're doing that, because it might not. Just like the only goal here is to observe what's happening and be okay with it. When you can do that, you will get a sense of, like, a peace. <laughs> Almost, it's it's just like that tension that we usually have when we have cravings. It just goes away when you can allow it to be there. You can add that if you want to, or you can just do the first three things this week. It's up to you. So the first week, I usually want to leave you with that for you to explore because I don't really know what is going to happen for you, how easy you're going to find it, or if it's going to be difficult. If there's something that is going to be in the way of you doing it. And those are all things that we can explore next week and just dial in so that it's something that you can actually do. But I won't know that until you've tried. So I remember what... on the um, the first time you did this, there was like four weeks in a row where he's like, I just didn't do the homework. I was like, <laughs> hmm, okay. <laughs> so I definitely plan on trying this at least and definitely going for it. I mean, if I come back and next week and say I didn't do it at all, I mean, somebody held me hostage. Sure, I don't know, so. <laughs> I definitely plan on, like, I would like to move forward with this process. So, yeah. Everyone's got their yeah. own pace, though. So, I mean, I get it, you know, but still. So, uh, do you imagine that anything would prevent you from doing this during this week? I can't, I can't see what. I mean, like I said, unless somebody had a gun to my head, do not feel your feelings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think, I think I could do this. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing that I've ran away from the most in my life, I believe, is this whole feeling. Because there's, I, I know we'll talk about the why that I'm doing yeah. this a little bit more deeper later on. Because I remember that was the challenge. But um, I think my true self is, you know, where those feelings are. There's something there that's truly me, and I and my one of my biggest reasons for this why is to to figure out who I truly am. So. 
that's a big reason why I actually want to go through this torture and <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> well, that's a good thought to have, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> torture. <laughs> so, in the past, why why have you avoided doing it? Because mm, it's hard. Uh, what about typically... it? It's hard. Um, it's just it's just difficult to feel the uh, the uh, the feeling of being uncomfortable. Um, I mentioned this to you before, but uh, I feel like you know instant gratification activities have always been there for me. I've I've always wanted to feel at peace in my life and feel just I guess calm in my own skin, and nothing has ever really given me that except these addictions that I've had my entire life. So it's so hard to, it's kind of like that Stockholm syndrome thing where it's like you, you fall in love with your captor <laughs> after such a period of time. So I feel like I've, I've been in love with my bad behavior for so long, even though I know that it's really been holding me back. But yeah, I think that's a big reason. Okay. What about those bad behaviors? Is it that you love? Like I said, just the the feeling of just try, try the, the 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 brief tranquility that it gives me. Just the would probably be the um the biggest reason. Anything else? It's probably just been so hardwired into my brain that it's it's just that subconscious. Um, it's kind of like a program on a computer. It's just it's been there for so long. It just runs and runs and runs and runs. And as humans, we kind of get stuck in these loops. And I think that's just been a comfortable loop for me to be in for so long that when you try to get off of that, you know, it's, it's like the difference between going on an interstate, it's paved and nice, and clear, everything's great. And then there's this pathway that's got like a danger sign. There's all kinds of thorns and thickets and looks like there's maybe a guy with an ax down the path. And you're like, let's take the interstate. <laughs> honey you know i don't know about this one it sounds like a good shortcut you know but i don't know so it's it's just it's a lot easier so what would have happened if you didn't give in to those urges and cravings over all those years or just starting now either well would it would it be different now I'm imagining it would be different. It would be much different okay. now. Yeah. So if you don't give in to the cravings now, what happens? I could finally really start getting closer to the dreams I have in life. I would most likely start to feel more confident about myself. I would most likely... Um, finally get to know myself. And in the past? What about the past? If you hadn't given in to those urges then, what would have happened? I would have most likely been a lot farther ahead in life, I would say. I guess everything happens for a reason. Uh, I don't know. But... Um, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. <laughs> so why did you give in then? Because wouldn't that have been good? Or would something bad have happened if you hadn't given in? The only bad thing that probably would have happened would just be me feeling a slight bit of uncomfortable sensations in my body, nothing bad would have happened per se. Um, most likely nothing but good things would have probably happened. Okay. So did you do that because you didn't think about it? Or was it just like, nah, I'll put it off, I'll put it off, I'll put it off. What was going on there? I don't... I I mean, I've tried to quit these different things multiple times throughout my life, but it seems like there's always there's always some type of addiction 
some type of behavior that always persists. Um, so I guess it was just probably just going about it the wrong way or and just not being ready at that moment in time to truly go through with it. I'm not sure, honestly. And why are you ready now? I feel like it's... It's just time. I mean, I'm, I just turned 33 this past month. Um, it's obviously still young, but um, I don't know. World's getting crazier and crazier, and I feel like if I don't deal with this finally, then I'm just going to get... I don't know. I just don't see good things happening if I don't finally hit this with my full force and go for it. Okay. So with that said, do you have a food plan for this week? Well, right now, I don't feel great. I, I would say that I had, <laughs> I think I had ice cream, I had cookies, I had chips, I had combos. I don't know if you've had combos, but I had soda, I had everything, and this past week has been bad. So I don't feel great right now. I don't feel even feel the slightest bit hungry, but I do... Um, once I'd get hungry, I'll just probably have, um, like a ribeye and some eggs, some ground beef, whatever I've done carnivore in the past and, um, it's horribly bland, but at the same time, every time I eat, I feel hundred percent satisfied. Um, good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get right back on carnivore, get right back to that, which for me is basically just, um, I want to do it without um the dairy well no no milk probably some cheese here and there um but uh yeah it's usually just ground beef ribeyes eggs and um things of that nature so okay and is your i'm just gonna ask you about your goal is your goal to stay 100 percent carnivore from now on because that's what you mentioned before Yes. Except for when we are doing other things. <laughs> yes, so that, until you tell me to put something else down my gullet for scientific purposes only, okay. then I will stick to the plan. So what happens if you don't stick to the plan this week? If you don't stick to the plan this week, then... Um, well, cross that bridge if we get to it, but I want to say that... Uh, I would like to not binge if that does happen. If it, I don't see why it will, but um, if it does happen, let's just try to interrupt the pattern or interrupt what's happened and um, see why it happened and just try to get back on track. Okay. But as I told you before, I'm a fantastic starter. So this <laughs> week, I promise you, I know it's going to be great. Now in two, three weeks, let's see. Right. But this week, okay. I'm going to be a superstar. Trust me. It's going to be simple. Well, that is actually quite handy because if you do sit with every single urge or craving that you have, mm -hmm. and you might have many for whatever, like not just the food, the more I you can practice. There will be billions of them. Yeah. If you do <laughs> it with all the billion of them, you, you're probably going to be cured in a week. <laughs> <laughs> But the more you're doing it, the easier it's going to be to do it the next time. Yeah, I really so, just want to hammer that subconscious yep. neural pathway and get that thing churning. In that case, we can just push on. We can make it a goal that you're just going to sit with as many cravings as you can for mm -hmm. this week and the next couple of weeks. Just do it. Yeah. Usually, if you can sit with 100 cravings, you're going to be pretty good. Okay. 100 cravings in a week? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's take a few weeks to do that. Okay. Because <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of cravings per day if you're going to do it in a week. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that there, is, there isn't a specified period of time that you need to do this. It's more about the intentional sitting with the cravings. The more just time the you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the better you're going to get at it. Yeah. And it's not like building muscles in the gym. You don't need the downtime and you don't need to wait for those muscles to build up. 
Sure. This can happen very, very quickly if you're doing this a lot or if you're practicing a lot. So just want to offer that. That's up to you. We can go slow or we can go fast. But it sounds like you're like, we're going to do it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Which is great. Let's do it. Perfect. I feel would like you we... that's, uh, Would you say that's 100 documented cravings? It's probably 100 most... successful cravings where you right. actually do sit with them. You In the mm -hmm. beginning, you will have a bunch of cravings that you might be a little bit resistant to or trying to push away or whatever. Mm. Those are not useless because they can be a combination of you actually successfully sitting with it and then it just turn into some sort of resistance. Like, what is why, an, why haven't you got? Sorry? What, what's, what's, is an unsuccessful craving just one where you cave into the desire, crave into the behavior or? Not necessarily. So when I say an unsuccessful craving, it's when you're using willpower and when you're just like white knuckling it through. When you're doing it successfully, it feels completely different and you, you're going to feel relaxed about it and accepting of the craving. So it's like, okay, it's here. I can't change anything about it. It's fine. I can have cravings. My only goal is to just feel what it feels like. So what's a willpower one look like? I'm not going to give in. I'm just going to get through this. I'm going to wait till the craving goes away. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So that one's just like the other. The first one is just like being zen with it. Be like, okay, whatever, cool. It's yeah. here. It's kind of an kind of an uncon or uncomfortable, but the other yeah. one's just like, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. We'll get through this. Like you're just trying yeah. to exactly. And it might start out on the right track and then transform into the other one, <laughs> mm. which is fine because that's still counting because you're still tr starting to build this new neural pathway. It's just that you're practicing both at the same time. But that's not a huge problem because you're still getting one repetition from that. Mm -hmm. So they count. <laughs> cool. and, and sometimes we don't know, like, uh, well, it felt good, but I don't know. Then I went to eat anyway. And it could just be like you actually sat with it successfully and then you relaxed about it and you just came back and you weren't aware of it or whatever. And then you went to eat something. Mm -hmm. I think what you've done in the past is obviously used willpower because you're like, and now I'm highly motivated. So I'm just going to focus on that and I'm just going to ignore the cravings. That's mm -hmm. also not, it's not, not as bad necessarily, but it's not ideal because you're right. still not dealing with the problem. Mm -hmm. It's just a more comfortable way of getting through it. And I think maybe that's where you are for the first two, three weeks. And then you start using willpower more and more and you're like, oh, this is too hard. Exactly. So we shall try and get you on track with just being okay with having the cravings. Because I have cravings, but they're not emotionally catching me anymore. It's more like, hmm, that would be nice. And then I'm like, nah, I really want it. And it's not a problem. It's just that I practice that so many times. It just happens on its own. I don't have to think about it too much. Most of the time. All good? Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. I think we have time to start lo looking at your reason for why you want to do this as well. Perfect. We, we, we're fast today. <laughs> so <laughs> let's do that. So why do you want to do this? Tell me. Yeah. So I think this has really been holding me back in life, these different behaviors. Um, I want to just have mental or I want to have mastery over my emotions. You know, this this is kind of like what you're saying. Um, something pops in your head and it's kind of like it's a knee-jerk reaction. So I feel like my feelings and my emotions are in control of me, but I'm I'm supposed to be the one that's in control of them. So I want to feel what that feels like. And also to be able to help other people do the same. So why is it important to you to be in control of your emotions? So I can better handle um, life and what it throws at me, what myself throws at me. I think if if you want to be successful, I say I think I think um, you're better equipped to becoming successful if you can uh, master those things in your life. Yeah. 
Okay. Why do you want to be successful? Why is that important to you? Um, the alternative doesn't sound so great. Not being successful. <laughs> um, uh, it's you only. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I'm only here one time. I don't know all the different. You know what happens after death and all that. Blah blah blah. But um, I mean, why not? <laughs> You know, why be like the uh, the masses and just kind of be mediocre? I really, truly feel like I have incredible potential. And I really want to explore that. I mean, as for this experience in life, like this is, I'm, I'm sure this is the only one of, you know, the Jared that's here that gets to, you know, do this crazy thing called life. So there's, the, and it's, <sighs> there's people that can literally just do whatever they want. And I want to be one of those people. I want to just be able to be, have, you know, freedom of my time, you know, not be on anybody else's clock, whatever. And I don't think that's going to happen unless I get rid of this or I, unless I finally solve this problem that I've had for so long. So then once I solve this problem, there'll be other problems that life will be able to throw at me and I will be able to start you know, tackling them. But until I do this, I'm no, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere close to that type of um, way of life. So why is it important to you to be able to do that and be able to explore your potential? I think the closer I get to that is this just is just um, the closer that I can get to true freedom in life. Um, I think I think we're supposed to be free. Um, but you know, there's many, many things that society does to keep us somewhat enslaved, I'll say. Um, in the West, we feel like we're in a free society, but <laughs> I don't think that's quite the case. But um, yeah, the, the closer I get to my potential and the closer I get to that way of life, I think I can just truly, I can finally be an actual free human being. And if I can't be free here, then I won't be free with everything else. So I need to free myself from the prison that I've built in my brain. Once I can finally escape that prison or destroy it, whatever, then I can actually start working on the cage that society is building around me, slowly trying to build around me and I, I would say the rest of the population. If that makes sense. Yep, it does. So. Why is it so important to you to be a free human being? Uh, so I think humans are incredibly powerful and just, um, I think if, if I can achieve that and I can inspire others to do it, then it's just, it's, it's kind of crazy what we could most likely accomplish if all of us, if more of us slowly become more and more activated, um, it's just the, the sky's the limit of what we could do if we were all more free. And uh, that's just interesting to think about. And like I said, I would like to do this for myself and then do things like what you're doing and to help other people do the same. Um, and yeah, it's just, it would be cool what we could do as a population if we weren't so bogged down in our own head. Yeah. And why is that important that you and more people can achieve incredible things as free people? I mean, what doesn't sound great about that? I don't know. I think we're yeah. getting to that. Yeah, but... I, think we're, I think we're getting to the end. of the... Not, not quite yet. No, I don't think what... so. Okay. Why um, is that important to you? I mean, just to see how far we can go as a species, if we can finally, you know, break the um, the cycle of just a small group of people calling all the shots to just an enlightened, an enlightened um, population that doesn't fall for these silly tricks of fear and, you know, psychological tricks that they play upon us, you know, just actually being, you know, playing with a full deck of cards. And um, not being subjugated to all this, you know, BS that we are. I don't know. It just sounds cool to be a, an enlightened population and do cool things. I don't know. <laughs> so
So let me rephrase that to if that were to happen, what then? If that happens, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not How sure. How would you feel if that happens? I feel like I would feel quite satisfied. I mean, there's probably always, at that point, you could most likely really dig deep into your true creativity. And I think once you've freed yourself up here in the in, in your mind and you relinquish all of your self-imposed shackles, then you can truly, how is it, find your gifts. And I feel like most of the things that plague me in my mind wouldn't be uh, an issue anymore. One second. Brief intermission, interruption, I should say. Um, yeah, I, I think most of these thoughts that go through most people's heads are just absolutely just, like you said, they're just they're just phenomenon that just happened. But myself included, you we attach so much to these these things. It would it's it's as if we're walking outside and we look at clouds, and and we're we're basing our life on the shapes of these clouds and like letting clouds like control our lives it's really weird but they're just they're just random phenomenon that happened but if most more people didn't have this um i guess it's it's an addiction or it's just like it's a program or whatever it is of just constantly putting emotional and so much energy into these physical phenomenon or just random things that happen in your head and just be free then you could spend your time and energy on just so much more productive stuff. I don't know. So what would that look like if you could deep, dig deep into your true creativity and feel free? Well, I don't feel like I've ever, I don't, how do I say this? It would feel nice because my entire life, I feel like I've tr been trying to be somebody else. And, um, I think if I get to that point, I'll actually have a good understanding of truly who's in this little meat suit. If I finally, you know, um, tackle what's going on in my head, I won't. I think because it's it's low key. It's like a, there's I'm I'm afraid of experiencing something by doing what we're talking about. Me doing proposing me feeling these feelings. That's why I've always tried to be somewhat of a a doppelganger, or chameleon, whatever you want to say being like whoever I'm around, but I think it would just be nice to finally feel who I am. And if I, if I really address these issues, I think I will get closer to that. I think I'll have a much better chance of finally getting to know myself. I think it would just, it would, ultimately, you really just want to be happy and you really just want to feel peaceful. And I think, I think by doing these things, that's what I would experience. And yeah, that would be nice. And when you were talking about digging deep into your true creativity, did you mm -hmm. have anything in mind there? Like, do you know what that would be? No. No. <laughs> no. And if you did know, what 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 flavor would it have? I mean, I think I'm, I'm I think I'm just, I'm designed or I'm supposed to. Um, be a catalyst to help other people get to different higher levels of themselves. So I think um, my true creativity would be my own spicy way or my own flair on getting people to do that. Um, so I guess that would kind of somewhat maybe be what the creative aspect would be, finding interesting ways to help people get over their bullshit. Oh, can we cuss here? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know the whole... Bullshit's YouTube. fine. Okay, that's, cool. That's a very... Um, what's the word? I don't know. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> Safe we can swear here. Yeah, we can swear here. That's fine. Cool. And your true self, do you have any idea who that is? Um, I don't know how that looks so well. Um my true self, do I have any idea who it is? Um, no, I mean, 
someone who's pleasant to be around. Um, someone who will, I know that I genuinely enjoy listening to people. I don't just sit there and wait to say what I'm going to say. I, I want to actually hear. I do actually take note of what people say and remember things. So I do enjoy that. I think that's somewhat of my true self. But um, other than that, yeah, I don't know. It's difficult. So when you think about who you are today, how would you like that Jared to change in the future? Like who who do you want to be? Who do I want to be? I want to be, I want to be like, I want to be like that, like that that dude that's like just roaming the planet, but is just like a bastion of of wisdom, who just comes across random people and just like sprinkles a little bit, and then they're like, wow, like it blows their mind, and just someone who's really. Um, gotten over their own self-imposed roadblocks. Um, I want to have a, a badass physique. I'm not trying to look like Arnold, but, um, you know, just, you know, somebody, when you look at me, you're like, that dude's probably been in the gym a couple times. Um, and just, just someone who's really in control of what they're, in, what, what they have the capability to be in control of, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, just someone... Someone who's in control. Like I said, not of other people, but just, you know, I can control my shit. I can control my shit. Excellent. What of this is missing right now? Um, I know you're not there yet, but are there things that you could have done now that you're not doing? Just stick to it. For some reason, I always stop. And I don't know why. <laughs> it's weird. I've, I've just gone for this many, many times. And for some reason, I just... And if there's an interruption and if there's some type of... Or if I just mess up, I just I just sprint in the opposite direction. and just completely self-destruct. I don't know what it is. I think... Like... Like we were talking about earlier with the um, what you've done for so long, your brain wants you to do certain things, even though it, it, it usually doesn't turn out to be very good, but it, it does it because it thinks that it's protecting you. Uh, it's, it's a weird concept. Your brain doesn't truly like – your brain's smart, but it's really stupid at the same time. Uh, yep. I mean – it's weird, but yeah, I guess I just, I always default. Like I go for it, I go a little bit up the hill and if I stumble, then I just say, fuck it. And just, you know, sprint the other way and start rolling and beat myself up. It's weird. So I don't know. I think it's just a good, a so good solid plan of attack. And that's been missing a good so I mean, I've had plans in the past, but I've not had good contingency plans of what happens if you mess up. It's usually just all or nothing. So probably in the past, I've just been an all or nothing and all doesn't usually happen. <laughs> so it's going to be nothing. Um, and I guess probably a good established why, like I've never just, I've never had that routine programmed where, you know, if I start to maybe falter a little bit, like just bring back this clear crystal of why I'm doing this in the first place. Um, and I don't know, stuff like that, yeah. So did we know your big why now? Do yeah. you remember it? <laughs> I think at the end of the day it's just to 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 um to be free and to finally know who I am. Yeah, and part of it is we all have values that are very important to us and that we usually want to live accordingly to and when we're not that doesn't feel like our true self mm -hmm. but you can also choose who you want to be you don't have to just 
try and dig and find out who's underneath there because you can also choose who you want to be. All right. I can tell you for certainty that for a while now, I know who I definitely don't want to be. And that's the every day, like, I'm sure you've heard the term like NPC. No. Um, you've never heard that. Oh, interesting. I might have, but I might not I have know, remembered yeah. it. <laughs> See, I, <laughs> tell I me. Like Bart, Bart might know. But an NPC essentially is like, I'm sure you've seen those memes where it's just like a little gray person with like the weird beady eyes. Uh, an NPC is basically like, it's, it, it comes from like a video game. Oh, okay. It, so, okay, I know what it is then. <laughs> it's like a non, it's a non-playable character. Someone yep. who's just there, but they're not really just, just whatever, just taking up space. I don't want to be like the masses. And I feel like the everyday person is is the person that just blissfully just does all the things that I'm trying to get out of. I know the, I know how bad these things are for me, but I keep doing them. But I feel like the everyday person constantly watch, like watches porn like every other day, constantly just eating junk food, just being lazy, you know, not really going for, you know, big stuff in life, just kind of a mindless consumer. I don't want to be that. And that's what I've been for so long. So I know for, I know what I don't want to be. So that's a good starting point. What would the opposite to that be? Going for higher stuff in life. Um, just um, being someone who's not so um, attracted to the quick pleasure. Someone who's more addicted to the climb and to getting to the um, deeper levels of satisfaction. Not these quick little fixes that I've definitely pursued the majority of my life. If you could commit to one thing that would allow you to do all of these things, what would that be? If I could commit to one thing that would help me achieve these things is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think, I think what we're wanting to do is going to be that, that thing, the feeling of the feelings. And I want to add to that the willingness to feel uncomfortable. Yes, absolutely. I think that is the key that binds them all together. Mm -hmm. When you are willing to just feel uncomfortable and do that stuff anyway, what would possibly hold you back then? Yeah, exactly. I think um, because the they say, you know, the, the biggest things in life, often take a lot of sacrifice and if you can just if you can start with the smallest thing of just you know feeling an uncomfortable thought then you can and if you can master that then that can just exponentially build into doing other difficult things in life but i think it's if you start there it's very small but i think it can have a really big return if you do put in that time and put in those repetitions like we're talking about yeah so when you think about feeling uncomfortable, what comes up then? <laughs> Big smile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to also think about like when I'm going to be doing this. Like, I'm obviously going to have to do other things in life, right? So like, I don't know. How do I like modulate that? Like, how do I... I mean, if I'm just sitting there chilling and I don't really have much to do, then yeah, I feel like I can spend a good bit of time feeling these things. But if I'm like at work or different things, like how do you suggest I kind of go about this? Oh, you tell me. I mean, I guess just if I'm if I'm in someone in the middle of something and I and something comes up, I should just probably just try to jot something down, put it in my phone, sit there for, for at least spend. A little bit of time with it and, and just move on with my life but take at least take take some time to consciously observe it like we're talking about and get that repetition in but if i have more if i'm just relaxing on a day off and it's really gnawing at me you know i, I guess i would want to spend as much time with it as possible to really try to dig deep and get the most out of that repetition so what do you do at work i um i'm a pressure washer uh, so basically, most of the time we work overnight. Um, I don't know if there's, yeah, you've probably heard of Chick fil A or no? Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. So we just do those. We do those drive throughs overnight. They're obviously not open at nighttime. So we do them at night. So most of the time, I'm literally, I have a lot of time at work to just think. And I don't okay. have, 
my job is very my boss so it's me just me and my boss just just two man team so mostly i just have this um i don't know if you've ever used a surface cleaner it's basically just like a lawnmower for the street um <laughs> i don't use one personally no. <laughs> it's 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 literally just all you do is just make you just you're just like mowing the lawn but it's just it's like concrete i do like i get them the main sections of shed off and then he goes back with the you've probably seen like the regular pressure washing gun and yeah. he just does like the fine touches like the curves and just gets everything that i've shaken up so i'm literally just mindlessly walking back and forth back and forth back and forth so i have a lot of time to feel i have a lot of time to actively think i got my yeah. job i could just straight up put it in the background and i'm just pushing along you know doing my thing i don't have to really think about that it's it's pretty simple well it's perfect so, yeah so so in that case i mean if you can write it and you can do that but i don't think it's necessary to do that all the time especially if it's inconvenient you know yeah sorry boss i just need to stop and write this down you can always do it in but your I head. Probably, but... I can I can honestly just even if even if it happens at work while I'm doing that, for me to pull out my phone real quick and jot, you know, put put a note in, felt a craving, blah blah blah. Cause I, I can eat, honestly just do it with one hand. It's yeah. it's not that hard. But yeah, I don't think I need to be, you know, obsessed like, oh fuck, I have to write this down like every two seconds. But I mean, when I do have the time, yeah. Get it down. Yeah and do that and then you can just walk around with your machine and like i feel this in my body right now yeah and all good you have the perfect job <laughs> for this anyway <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's actually good yeah totally. it sounds the quite job i was working of... before this was not optimal at all I was sitting at a desk at a car dealership and pestering the shit out of people to come in <laughs> and try and to, to buy a car it was it was it was dreadful so i definitely i just walked out of that one <laughs> it was very it was very interesting how i got out of it but i did now i love my job <laughs> not where i want to be but for what so it what? is it's not where if, i want to be if it's if you're not yeah. you know it doesn't matter where you are right now as long yeah exactly as you enjoy it who cares it's zero stress so i mean that's nice <laughs> exactly so we have a plan then, I think, uh, write it down. So the only thing that I want you to do this week for me is just do those observations of the circumstance or the trigger, the thoughts, how that feels in your body, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then you can just write down what happened. If you, like what happened after, did the craving come back? How did it feel after? Did you feel like relaxed about it, or did it feel like it went? Did I want to blow my brains like out just to yeah. stop the feeling from happening? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then, obviously, if if you gave in to the craving or not, can be kind of useful to know. And um, you just bring that to our next session because I want to have a look at it and just go through it, not just for me but for you, because I know <laughs> if I keep a diary i just write everything down i'm pretty good at it but i'm not very good at reviewing it but when you go back and have a look at it you you you're gonna start noticing patterns maybe that you have and things that are happening things that you might have forgotten about <laughs> and that is just a really good reminder for you and sometimes um i know it I have several clients who are like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. This actually happened, and that was really good. So it can also be a really good reminder for you of what you have achieved during the week. Right. Small little Because I can tell you, like, you should be looking through your diary every week to just see what's been going on. And you're going, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I know what's been going on. That's one of the things that is so easy to not do. So I prefer to just do that kind of quickly. We're not going to take the whole hour doing that, but just having a quick look through what, what's actually happened during the week. Mm -hmm. So for this first week, do you have any questions about what to do? Any concerns like this might not be working, something that's worrying you or anything else? No, it seems like a good um, game plan. I mean, it's, it's, it's an approach that I've never truly actually kind of went for, for doing this type of thing. Like you said, for me, it's always just been straight. I'm not going to do this. You know, just 
boom. But um, to actually go for feeling the feelings and um, experiencing and allowing them to be there. And just like you said, putting on the scientist hat, whatever scientist hat is, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it sounds cool. So the scientist hat is just being curious about what's going on. I no, I definitely understand the concept, but I just yeah. don't know what, what hat scientists wear. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but but it's like I just I don't want to explain it just for you, but for everyone who might be a little bit unsure about what I mean when I say that, it's just scientists are supposed to be curious about what happens. They want to find out why that happens, and they want to take they want to observe what is happening and just take notes of everything that is happening so that they can make conclusions out of the data. So you're literally collecting data with a very open and curious mind. Because when you can be curious about what is why is happening, rather than being in a state of, ah, here we go again, now I have cravings, <laughs> you might be able to be like, this is really interesting. I wonder why I have cravings right. when this is happening. Which is a lot more useful to you. Because when we can be curious about it, it's like, hmm. There's no judgment there. It's just curiosity. Yeah, I think if you're like, oh, fuck, here we go again, then <laughs> it's, it's more easier for you to want to find a way out of that. Like, And then that's where you're going to probably give in and do things that you know are going to bring you pleasure or relief from this. If you take a yeah. fuck to, huh, why is this happening? Interesting, cool, blah, 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 feel this. And then it's like you said, it's just more curiosity can... I think can bring on some interesting things. So, yeah, another thing that I like to bring in, um, just because it popped up, I'm going to mention it. But I like to bring in humor and just see life as a game. Mm. Everything that is happening, it's just a big funny game. True. <laughs> like, I want to have fun in the game. I don't play games to feel forced into doing something or live a boring life. I want to play games because it's fun to play games. And I want to play the game of life really well. Mm. And I want to have fun. So how can I have fun with actually having cravings? For me, yeah. the curiosity works really well when I want to have fun having cravings. Because it's like, this is crazy. <laughs> I was thinking about chocolate and now I'm salivating like a dog. Like, that's crazy. And then I can laugh at it. And that is also another way of just like releasing the tension that is building up around the cravings and just let go of it at, in trying to change it in some way. Just like, okay, this is going to be there. Clearly something is really, really strange going on here. I don't know, but it's funny. I can just watch it and have fun. Yeah, I like that. So that that's me. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, obviously, but <laughs> just uh, offering that up as an alternative as well. Like, because sometimes we just start taking it too seriously. I'm like, oh, I sat with five cravings and now I can't really sit with them anymore. What's wrong with me? <laughs> and then we're back to being very serious and not allowing ourselves to just have fun with it and actually observe and being relaxed about it because we have too much pressure that we should achieve something at a certain time point or whatever. Mm hmm which is never going to be useful. So what is the number one thing that you're focusing on and that matters this week? Allowing myself to feel uncomfortable. Yes, I like it. And try to find the cues that bring on that um, uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. So the more I can identify the, the things that start the process, then I can be more equipped and aware to kind of know what I'm going to do and just to, oh, okay, yeah, I just becomes more familiar to me. So really be the scientist, sit, just dig deep and just sit there and not, not like, and try to get away from the willpower. You know, I know for a fact I'm going to be successful this week because like I said, I'm an amazing starter, <laughs> but let's, let's, I want to be, I want to be successful with something that I've never really try to be successful at because like I said I've never really tried to do it this way so it'll be interesting yeah and another thing that you can bring in while you're doing that if you feel like mm, this is a little bit hard try to connect to your true self 
what would true Jared do? Mm. How would he handle it? Like, ask him. Because he. Exists. I try to do that. I've tried to do that in the past for like maybe like a day and a half, and. <laughs> <laughs> but I also like to do I also like to do um, like I would ask ask like what my role models would do like I like hmm. Marcus Aurelius uh, he's like the guy that's like big big stoicism philosophy yeah I try to like put myself in his shoes like if he was here right now and he saw me getting ready to do what I would do what do you think or like yeah. just how would he handle the situation but yeah, yeah my true self is you know it's a very good way to put it and your it. true self might be very similar to him mm -hmm. and then doesn't matter who you're asking <laughs> Exactly. As long as it works, I don't care who you ask. <laughs> right. Just ask someone and try to model it. Yep. Or want to model it, I should say. Like it should be something that you really strive to wanting to be. Yeah. Okay, so that's us. We are finished for today, and I think you know pretty well what you're supposed to do. So just thank you to everyone who's been here watching. I haven't, as I said previously i'm not really answering questions when we're doing the coaching because um we're doing coaching so if you have questions you can turn up for the live q a on tuesday evenings and or afternoons depending on where you are and we can address that there do you have anything more that you want to ask me before we stop this do you think that i should to add another layer of it um, when i start like writing down the cravings and different things and documenting them do you think i should just shoot them on over to you when they happen as well you can if you want to if that mm -hmm. would be helpful absolutely that's up to you okay i think it's it not a requirement be, from me <laughs> it might be good for you to have as much data as possible as as well just yeah sure. for the process but yeah no if you want to do that go ahead cool okay thank you very much and we shall see you next week bye <laughs>